When you're working with cloth type characters, it's important to consider that if there's any overlap in your geometry, uh, your base geometry, the cloth, you're likely going to run into some calculation errors in Cyflex, and generally that just kind of compounds on itself, I find, and produces unwanted results. If you look at the crotch area here, it's sort of where his inner thighs meet, you can see that there is a little bit of overlap between the left cheek and the right cheek, or the left and right part of the inner thigh. Either way, I'm going to try and correct that so that uh, I reduce the likelihood of error. Uh, if I actually open up the display options for my camera, I'll just pin it down here, uh, I could turn on x-ray mode, but I don't actually see the overlapping points. If I turn on show transparent selected wireframe, I can actually see my point here represented by this dotted line. Um, I can manipulate it with the M tool, but I can't actually get at it because I'm using the overlay function on my display type, which is just allowing me to move whatever's closest to me. So I could switch to a screen mode, and at this point I can access the points. So just make sure you pull those out, get rid of that overlap however, however you have to. guys here. Sometimes these points can be really tricky to work with. Okay, that's looking better. and I'll pull the thighs apart here. So there's no overlap now. And I know this will allow us to be a lot more successful. I'll try and space these guys apart as best I can as well. So do your best at this stage. Sometimes you get really dense meshes and it's not as easy as dealing with something like this. So this isn't too bad. Either way, you're going to amass a number of move operators, in this case 36, and I'm going to want to freeze that into the modeling stack, so I'll uh, freeze the modeling. When you're done with x-ray mode, of course, you can turn it off, and you can also turn off the show transparent on selected wireframe. So we've got rid of all of our overlap, and I think now just to distinguish between Melkor and the underlying, or the, the cloth geometry, I'm going to want to assign a new shader to this object. I'm going to be in and out of textured mode a lot. So we'll take our object and move into the materials manager, modify materials, and currently the Melkor body shader is controlling the cloth geo by using the who uses tab of the material manager. So we'll make sure to uh, create a new material, which I'll rename to clothing material or in this case it's more like a jogging suit, so let's be a little more accurate. Jogging suit material, and I'll assign that to the selected object. So assign material to selected objects. If I click back to the render tree from who uses, uh, I'll open up the thong preset and I'll edit it, of course. So I'm going to double click, and first thing I'm going to do is remove the specularity. Get it really low, really broad, wide and then lower the color of the specularity, which will just sort of take it closer to a Lambert, just with a little a little hint of a highlight. And of course, we'll map in a uh, specular map to that to, to break up the highlight. Uh, the suit for now, uh, we'll just keep it a darker color, but at least we can see where we have any penetration. So I'd kind of go in here and fix up those last little bits once you have the, the shaders applied. Pull on that. thighs out a little bit more and a little area in the back here. Alright, do one last freeze. And at this point we're ready for cloth on the cloth object. 
but we're not quite ready on the character object. The geometry that makes up the Mulcor character is right now as dense uh, as the geometry that makes up the clothing. Typically, cloth works best when the density ratio between the clothing and the underlying skin is at least twice as much. That way you have smaller patches of polygons that can fit more smoothly over top larger expanses of polygons. So it's just the approximation, the, the collision detection works a lot better in this case. So I'm going to actually make a low res ver uh, version of this cloth character. And to do that, I'll just do a poly reduction on Mulcor at the modeling uh, construction level. So I'll modify Mulcor, uh, just have a look at our operator stack first. We've got our envelope operator live, so anything we do is just going to be passed down uh, to the retopologized mesh. I'll modify the poly mesh and run polygon reduction. Now that's going to give me a lot of triangles initially, but that's okay. I'm just going to, uh, maybe I'll isolate this object in its own uh, window here. I'll just use the camera viewport uh, isolate selection. And the first thing I want to do is preserve quads as much as possible, so I replicate the original uh, structure of the character, um, the layout, that is. And then when it comes to the ratio, I'm going to start to increase the ratio to decrease the triangle count. And I figure I can get it pretty low here. Again, just finding something that still gives me the shape of the character. I don't really need to worry so much about what's happening in the fingers. The fingers are okay. Yeah, this should work. So I have a new mesh of 2100 polygons. And if I close down that isolate uh, view, I uh, press Shift S. I'm going to activate my statistics selection info. And my mesh is, again, just over twice the triangle count. So we'll freeze in at that res. I just want to bake in the information in the polygon reduction op. So I'll freeze the modeling construction stack. And if I press W to have a look at the weight map, you'll notice everything has just been translated beautifully down to this new low res character. So I'll export this version of the character as my advanced rig. Uh, but this is our cloth model. And by reducing the poly count on this character, we actually end up allowing this for our base level character. So we'll call this our low res starting point for cloth. All right, so I'll export that model there. What I can do now is uh, clear the scene and actually bring in the model. So it saves me having to go in and make the, the changes to the uh, model name. And it'll ensure me that I am working with that character as well. So I'll switch to modify date. Uh, there's the cloth low res rig. We'll bring that back in. And we are uh, we're ready to go. So the setup for the cloth uh, kind of ends here, and now we move more into the simulation side of things.